October 31. They found my son's body uh, at, a ho at a grungy, seedy hotel, downtown Toronto, a very seedy part of town, uh, shortly after 12 o'clock. Uh, they found his body much the same way they would find his older brother's body a few years later, three years later. The body slumped in the chair, or just wear under shorts. Syringe sticking out of his arm, left arm, and... Four days after he died, mm. my my wife Lynn, yeah. the mother of my five children, yes. took her own life. Ironically, with pills that she'd taken from my sons from a previous drugstore heist. Yeah. I remember she came in the room in the morning. Yeah. And I remember she came into our room because she was staying in the room across the hallway. We couldn't stay with each other. After my son died, George Lee, yes. every time I look at my wife, I start to cry. Right. Every time I start to talk, I start to cry. And the same with her. She started talk, talk, cry, can't be with each other. So she sleep in our son Jesse's bed, my first son to die. Yes. And I would sleep in our own, our communal bed. Yes. Anyway, at the day my wife died, I remember she, she came into the room in the morning. She was foraging through the hope chest. I didn't know what she was looking for, but she was looking for drugs that she would taken from our sons from a previous drugstore heist and saved them for the day she would have no hope, as she ironically kept them in a hope chest. Anyway, when I left the house that morning at 7.30, she was in bed. Her backside was facing me as I opened the door. I saw her backside facing me. She was in a burnt orange tracksuit, and I said, I'll see you later, doll. But I didn't realize I was talking to a dead woman. I left the house and came back at 1.47 in the afternoon, exactly 1.47 in the afternoon, and, uh, and uh, I went by my wife's bedroom door, I peeped inside, I saw her body in exactly the same positions I seen at 7.30 that morning, and I know what happened. I walked around the bed, I saw, I saw my wife clutching the Holy Bible and the cremated remains of our son Jesse, yes. my first son to die, and uh, a suicide note. I yelled out, Stephen, mom's dead. And my second oldest son, my last son to die, that screamed and he ran through the hall, long hallway in that house, smashing himself to the front door. He smashed himself right to the front door, ran right through the doors, broke the doors, screaming his pain when he was kicking garbage cans. And I always say, my son had lived with the pain and guilt of losing two brothers. My son yes. had lived with pain and guilt of losing his mother. And my son was going to come around with me to, to speak to young people about drugs. Right, right. And I was, uh, and, uh, but he died 30 days before we were supposed to make our first presentation. My oldest son died the same way of with a cigarette in his hand. And before Stephen could light a cigarette, he was dead after he shot out. Seven seconds later, he said, you're dead. And I was at the absolute, in the deepest funk of my life after the loss of my second son and my wife within a four day period. And uh, uh, I, sometimes I say to myself, I don't know how I, re I recovered, but I do know how I recovered. It's because of the love of family at the time sure. and the love of my friends. I have a lot of good friends. I have a lot of, and my family members were very supportive of me, for, uh, for me, of me at that particular time. I was in bed for a month and a half after my wife died. Wow. After, four days after my son died. I couldn't get out of bed, but my family come over each and every day, hug me, kiss me, tell me to love me. Yeah. And I should articulate to myself after a few weeks how love made you feel. I said to myself, love makes you feel strong. Love makes you feel tender. Love makes you feel secure. Love makes you feel appreciated. Love makes you feel important. Love makes you feel of value. You know, so who needs me? My family needs me. Who needs me? My friends need me. And that kind of kind of boosts your ego a little bit, strokes your sure, ego a little yeah. bit. And that time of need, of me needing to hear those things, me needing to feel those things. And uh, that's, you know, so I came out of it. And plus, I hate to say it, but I started seeing my future wife. I mean, a month and a half after my wife died, I started seeing her just as a, just as a, as a friend, a colleague of my wife. Uh, yeah. She used to work in the hospital. Right. My first wife, cardiogram technician, and, uh, and my second wife, registered nurse. They were friends, and uh, anyway, I'd have coffee with my second wife, my future second wife, and I have another coffee, another coffee, and all of a sudden it seemed like I got married again. Yeah. Next thing I was getting married. But she helped save my life, she helped she put me, helped me feel like I wanted to live again.